Central Asia as a region of Asia, in which Turkic and Iranian people mostly populate. Even though Greece is located in southeastern Europe, Greeks used to rule Central Asia. But how did the Greeks come to Central Asia from this far away? When Alexander the Great defeated the Achaemenid Empire, personal oppression in Greek lands was over. Alexander conquered all the lands of the Achaemenid Empire, including modern-day Turkmenistan and Afghanistan. After Alexander died, the Soviet dynasty took over modern-day Iran, Afghanistan and Turkmenistan. However, the Greeks in the region declared independence and established the Kingdom of Greco-Bacteria in 250 BCE. It was one of the most urbanized and richest countries in Asia. The kingdom started an expansion to the east and west. Because the Parthian Empire took over Iran, trade routes to the rest of the Greek world were blocked for Greco-Bacteria, resulting in maritime trade with Greek-controlled Egypt improved. After the death of Theodos I, his son, Theodos II, became the new king. He was allied with the Parthian Empire against the Seleucid dynasty. Greek Athenians became the next ruler after he overthrew Theodos II. Athenians got attacked by the Seleucid ruler Antiochus III, and even though he crushed 10,000 horse cavalry, he lost the war. After the Seleucid troops left Greco-Bactria, son of the Athenians, Demetrius became the next ruler of the kingdom. The kingdom expanded into northeast Persia. After the Maya Empire got overthrown by Shunga dynasty, Greco-Bactria set an expansion into India in 180 BC. Demetrius and Menander I invaded the area from northeastern India to Pataliputra, but the natives managed to push them out of Pataliputra and its surroundings. Still, a rich portion of India was invaded. A general of Demetrius, Ecrotides, overthrew the dynasty of Athidumus and became the next ruler of the kingdom, but he was defeated by Menander I, king of Greek India. Right after his defeat, the Parthians attacked the Greco-Bactria and defeated them, causing the Greeks to give up a significant portion of their land. The Scythian Empire defeated and invaded both the Parthian Empire and the Greco Bactrian Kingdom. In 120 BC, the Yuhi people invaded southern Bactria. Some other kingdoms existed in the region until the 10th century, but they were not that effective. This was the end of the Greeks in Central Asia. However, this is not the end of their culture. Greeks introduced new architectural styles to the Indians. They built new cities in the region. They also affected the religion in India by introducing sculpture into them. Inspired by the Greeks, Indians crafted sculptures of Buddha. The Kanshu casket was a Buddhist reliquary made of copper. This reliquary was first created by a Greek artist, Agesilaus. Greeks built many cities such as Handa, which was built by Greeks in Afghanistan. Greek mythology affected India, China, and Japan. Greeks even created a type of Buddhism themselves, Mahayana Buddhism, which didn't become that effective in India itself, but in China, Vietnam, Korea, and Japan. A few Greek words were adopted in the Sanskrit language. For example, ink, pen, book, bright, center, siege mining, syringe, barbarian, shell, and the floor. The Greek Yuna calendar was used in northwestern India for a long time. The Greek standard of the weight of silver coins was adopted by the Indian kingdom of Kruji, Kujinda in Punjab. As you can see, the Greeks affected the region for a millennium, creating religions, alphabets, and architectural styles in the region. Without the Greek history, we won't be able to understand the history of Central Asia, India, and the Far East. Stay tuned for new content. It was Absolute Times.